Wrestling fans, welcome to the May edition of the MWF Superstar Zone. This month, it's the first installment as we look back at the 47th annual Cauliflower Alley Club reunion in Las Vegas, Nevada. At uh, the Iron Mike Award, please welcome the uh, winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award last year, WWE Hall of Famer, and some say, and I agree, the greatest announcer in the business, Mr. Jim Ross. Raise 
raising his middle fingers in the faces of everyone who dared oppose him. Stone Cold Steve Austin was the blue collar warrior for the common man. Trained by gentleman Chris Adams, Austin broke into the wrestling business in Texas in 1990. And after a year, he moved on to WCW, where he won the television championship as stunning Steve Austin. He joined WWE in January 1996, and his rise to superstardom soon began. At the 1996 King of the Ring, using the Stone Cold Center, he won the tournament, defeating Jake the Snake Roberts, who was portraying a born again Christian. After the match, Austin cut a now famous promo telling Roberts, Talk about your songs. Talk about John 316. Austin 316 says, I just whip your ass. Austin 316 ultimately became one of the most popular catchphrases in wrestling history. During his time in WWE, Austin left the path of destruction following feuds with Bret Hart and adding Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, and The Rock to the list of carnage. But no feud was bigger or more intense than the one with his boss, WWE Chairman Vince McMahon. That rivalry began in 1997 when he delivered a Stone Cold Stunner to McMahon. The crowds would come alive with the sound of shattering glass as Stone Cold made his way to the ring. After running roughshod over McMahon and practically everyone else in the WWE, Austin retired after WrestleMania 19. Steve Austin held 19 championships throughout his professional wrestling career and is a six-time WWE Champion. He made the transition from the ring to television appearances, including Nash Bridges and Chuck, and to the big screen in The Longest Yard and The Expendables, starring with superstars Sylvester Stallone, Jet Li, Dolph Lundgren, and Steven Seagal. In 2011, Austin returned to WWE to host the reality series, Tough Enough. Tonight's Iron Mike Award winner is the 2009 WWE Hall of Fame inductee. Steve Austin will stand shoulder to shoulder with past honorees including Mad Dog Bichon, Nick Bockwinkle, and Sergeant Slaughter. There's not a more deserving addition to this list of honorees than the toughest SOB on the planet, Stone Cold <coughs> Steve Austin. Guys, the Steve Austin can say, can set your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who want to run the bathroom, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I am, uh, it's important for me to get this said because I've always said that tomorrow is never a guarantee for any of us. Uh, be thankful for yesterday, but enjoy today. So for just a couple of minutes here, I want to enjoy today. So indulge me. I have uh, had some unique opportunities in the business, and after assuming the thankless, you're a no good bastard, J.J. Dillon role in WWE, for our main objective was to make all talents life miserable and screw them at every opportunity on a payoff that we could. Uh, one of the great pleasures of my life was being able to provide or help provide an opportunity to people that wanted to achieve greatness. And of all the men and women that I have I have the opportunity to facilitate that opportunity, no one wanted to be a star more than Steve Austin. I gave a little seminar yesterday and I outlined everything that in my view WWE looked for in a superstar. And if any of you wrote any notes, you checked it off, you could check off his name by every single check mark. You know, not only is Steve one in the pantheon of the greatest of all time, uh, to me he's someone that's much more important. Uh, Steve Austin is a loyal friend and a member of my family. And, and that is a not supposed to happen in the JJ role. Is it JJ? We're supposed to be the enemy. The office is always out to screw you. And I thought that was a bad, uh, uh, it was erroneous. It shouldn't be that way. 
we should we should encourage our talents to to be great and to give them opportunities at every corner and solve the problems when we when we could. Uh, I remember one down on Monday Night Raw when I blurted out and I was actually sober. Uh, that damn Texas rattlesnake did something, and and you know, God, my God, did we really realize at the time that an ad lib would equate to T-shirt sales and an image and a feeling that one human being manifested into the most amazing persona in the history of our business. He was disrespectful, he was defiant, he was a beer drinker, the anti-hero. But he would ascend to heights that had never before been accomplished. If that's my cue to leave, you guys are in trouble. <laughs> I can tell you that I've had some amazing moments starting out as Leroy McGurk's driver in 1974 and working my way through the ranks as a ring crew guy and a referee and finally leaving WWE as executive vice president of the company. But I have had no bigger moment, including being inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2007 than when in WrestleMania 25, when Steve made that, that one round in that ATV, and we had that one last beer together. And it was a, for those of you that are trivia nerds, it was a Coors Light. <laughs> we drank them all, and I still have that beer can on my desk in my home, and it will probably be buried with It's more important to me than this ring. So I thought that maybe, and well, this is the first. This poem might describe my friend, Stone Cold Steve Austin. This poem. I don't think I've ever read a poem. <laughs> It would be this. I've traveled the world the past few years. Sometimes I think of home and I have to fight back the tears. Another rental car, another bus, another plane ride takes me to faraway places. But what I remember most are the smiling faces. Short people, tall people. People with glasses. But the bottom line is, I put all of their asses. <laughs> You can look back at all the greats in the business, who had the best head scissors, who had the best punch, who had the best headlock, who was the greatest shooter, who better more women, who better more men. <laughs> but as far as marketing and licensing, selling tickets, selling pay-per-views, Putting an ass every 18 inches. Stone Cold Steve Austin is the greatest of them all. And there will never be another one like him. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Stone Cold Steve Austin, the winner of this year's Mike Mazurki Award.
Coming to Lowell, see John Cena, CM Punk, and Sheamus battle Daniel Bryan, Mark Henry, and Kane in a six-man tag team match. Don't miss your chance to see all your favorite Raw and SmackDown superstars live in action. It's WWE Super Show live in Lowell, June 16th. Tickets available now. Serious bullshit right there. <laughs> All right, now, a lot of people don't know me real personally as Steve Austin, but as Steve Austin, I really don't like to speak in public. So I'm a pretty shy guy, but I'm here at Stone Cold Steve Austin tonight. I'm going to do the best I can. I'll tell you what, I've uh, known Jim Ross a long time. I've met some, I've made some really, really good friends in this business. I love this business. They have Jim Ross comes out here and Ainge, of course, is with him and he's on fire on a comedy spree and tears start coming out of my eyes because he's making me laugh because he's just one funny son of a bitch. And then a tear comes out of my eye because he touches my heart because he means how much to me and I love Jim Ross. And that's why, you know, he's probably the greatest of all time and telling the stories and having him in that ring. But thank you, Jim, for representing me and thank you for bringing me up here. I treasure our friendship and we to the end. Well, I'll tell you what, with that being said, you know, it, it, it was fun to be Stone Cold Steve Austin, but let me tell you something, I'm such a fan of this business, I love this damn business. See Harley and the chance to shoot the shit with JJ and Sarge and Ricky's at my damn table and how many times I got to go to the ring and have matches with Ricky Steamboat and I had some damn good matches with Ricky, you know, on TV and a couple pay-per-views, but our best matches happened in arenas when there wasn't no cameras, just house shows going 30 minutes and stuff like that. And I just, uh, it was just been here sharing the stage with Terry Funk and all the guys out there. Nick Funk was one of my favorites of all time. It's been a great business. And uh, I guarantee you, uh, you know, where's Lisa at? I was a big Lisa fan from way back. I had a crush on YouTube back in the day. And <laughs> Rock and Rob and Wendy Richter, I really enjoyed y'all's work back in the day and respected your work tremendously. And I, I love women's wrestling, wrestling. And Judy, you were around a little bit before. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see a whole lot of your work, but I love what you guys did in the ring. And I know you talk about the hardships that y'all went through. And I can understand it. Obviously, I didn't live it, but I respected and appreciated y'all's work. I really don't know what to say because there's been so many good stories out of here. I'm not going to come out here and just be a stand-up comedian, but uh, I remember growing up as a kid in South Texas, I was changing the channels. We lived in a uh, town of about 5,000 people. I would change the channels on TV and came across Houston Wrestling. And Houston Wrestling was a Paul Boss promotion out of Houston, Texas, coming to the Coliseum. And uh, man, I'll tell you what. There's just something about changing that channel, something about when I came across that, that product in the ring, like two guys in a smoke-filled arena. Couldn't really see, but maybe the first or second row of that crowd, and it was a whole different production back in the day, and you'd smoke in the arena, and hell, that was back when it was real, you know what I'm saying? And uh, man, I was absolutely loved. I watched professional wrestling my entire life, and after, you know, finally getting a scholarship to North Texas State, I had a chance out of junior college to go to either the University of New Mexico or North Texas State. And after taking that visit to New Mexico, I knew I wouldn't believe the state of Texas. And I went to North Texas State. It was right outside of Dallas, Texas. And the good thing about that was, it was 30 miles from the world famous Dallas Auditorium. All of the Ron Ericks. <laughs> Everybody used to ride up there on a Friday night with my buddies. We'd get drunk and throw shit at the wrestlers. No, pardon my language. I'm going to let my hair down a little bit. I, I cuss a lot in my personal life. I like to keep off my websites and my 
my Twitter account, Wayne, but we're all adults here. So we throw shit at the wrestlers. I mean, that's what you do when you're in Mark. You pay your tickets. Uh, these days, I mean, when I got in the ring, I didn't like nobody throwing nothing at me, but you know, that's how it goes. Uh, anyway, uh, I just uh, love the business. I got into the business, and uh, I remember breaking in at Chris Adams Wrestling School. And, you know, back in the day, that was when the business was still very protected. And, you know, if somebody said wrestling was fake, you probably was going to fight. And uh, so I started in the business because I loved it. And I remember some of these guys talking about traveling up and down the road. And, you know, I uh, started off and you know, making 15 $20 a night. And it was just fun to be in the ring. I got in the business because I loved what the wrestling business looked like on TV. I loved what it felt like to be in the ring and telling the story and, and uh, being either loved or hated. And bottom line is, I had a hellacious career, had a lot of bureaucratic red tape, a lot of bullshit along the way, had a lot of stuff that I had to work through, a lot of things a lot of the same lot of these guys in here have worked through, a lot of uh, what you young cats that are in the business trying to come up right now are working through, trying to figure out well, how do I get noticed, what I need to do to get on the map, how do I get my foot in the door, you know, I did all that, and uh, you know, through it all, uh, I got into business for me, and I loved it. I loved every bit of it. Uh, I take a lot of pride in what I was able to accomplish, and I was extremely hungry. I wanted to be the best in the world, and like I've told people many times, I was never the best looking, the, the best technical wrestler, this, that, or whatever, but I was able to do the best that I could do. And showing up here tonight, hanging out with Jim Ross, and Angel over there having a cocktail. And I got a chance to meet Terry. Terry's in a wheelchair and I he came from Nova Scotia. I got a chance to hey, your brother. And that's saying that the woods. I apologize. Terry right over there. And Terry came all the way from New Brunswick and I He drew a picture of me in the rain and do a picture of me drinking beer with his mouth. Terry's fun pleading. And he came all this way, uh, I guess, to be here, but to see me hang out. We got a chance to talk. And what I guess what I'm trying to him haul around, the best thing I ever got out of this business was touching people's lives. And for a guy to come here all this way and to say that to me uh, means everything in the world to me. And I've got to meet some people who went through some bad times in their lives and maybe through the horse shit that Stone Cold Steve Austin was doing on Monday Night Raw, got to live vicariously through them and draw strength from that and uh, get through some real big problems in their lives. <clears throat> and through all the things that I've done, whether they were good or they were bad, I guess that's the thing that I'm most proud of. And uh, before I wrap this thing up, I just wanted to uh, actually do something a little bit different because I'm not going to sit here and blow a bunch of smoke up my ass, but if there's a, a couple of cats out there that got a few questions, I would like to do just a few, answer a few questions of anything that you might have to ask, if indeed there are any questions, whether it be from uh, one of these youngsters coming in or, or just uh, anybody in general. Is there any questions whatsoever? No? Okay. <laughs> All right, sir. What is the bottom line? Is that bar shut back here? I could use another cocktail. That's the bottom line because that's it. So. What's that? Oh, go. 
Anytime going to the ring was, was, was fun for me. And, uh, you know, I see Ricky Zemo sitting here five, well, maybe eight feet away from me. Let me just go on record. There's probably a thousand people in here, whatever. Every time I beat Ricky Zemo, it was a shoot. Every time he won, it was a work. Wrestling fans, we are out of time this month to see the second pot of Stone Cold Steve Austin's acceptance speech. Check out the June edition of MWF Cyberstars, and we'll be back with more from Las Vegas on the Superstar Zone. Fans, be well.